Thus far in our discussion on DNA replication, we discussed the process by which our double-stranded DNA molecule must unwind itself before replication actually takes place. And we said that a special type of protein known as DNA helicase must bind to the origin of replication on the double-stranded DNA, and this helps break the hydrogen bonds that exist between our adjacent nitrogenous bases on our adjacent nucleotides and this therefore unwinds and unzips our double-stranded DNA and exposes the single-stranded DNA molecule. So basically our DNA helicase binds to the origin of replication and as it moves it breaks the hydrogen bonds and it unwinds our single-stranded DNA molecules and after we expose these sections another type of enzyme known as single-stranded DNA proteins or simply SSB proteins bind to those exposed regions and they allow, they keep the two single strands from reassociating and reforming the hydrogen bonds. So these single-stranded binding proteins are shown in green in this diagram. So once that takes place, another enzyme known as DNA gyrase binds onto our double-stranded DNA and it basically creates or introduces negative supercoils and this decreases the stress that is involved with the process of unwinding. Now, once we actually unwind our double-stranded DNA molecule and we expose these single-stranded DNA regions, another type of molecule known as primase, which is basically an RNA polymerase, creates primers or RNA primers. Remember, an RNA primer is basically a sequence of nucleotides that are needed for a DNA polymerase to bind and to begin the synthesis of our daughter strands. Now, how exactly does DNA polymerase actually synthesize our daughter strand? Well, basically, DNA polymerase acts as a catalyst. It catalyzes the formation of our phosphodiester bonds. So it takes the nucleotides that are found in the environment, so these are free nucleotides, and attaches these nucleotides together via phosphodiester bonds or phosphodiester linkages. In the process, every time we form a phosphodiester linkage by using the DNA polymerase, we release a pyrophosphate into the environment. And this basically drives the process of DNA replication. Now, DNA polymerase can only read the parent strand in the 3 to 5 direction, and this implies that it can only synthesize the new daughter DNA molecule in the 5 to 3 direction. So, to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following diagram. So, we have the DNA helicase that binds at the origin of replication. Eventually, it moves a certain distance, and it ends up at the location known as the fork of replication. The fork of replication is basically the location of our DNA helicase. So we can imagine that DNA helicase moves in the left directions towards the left along the x-axis. We have the DNA gyrase that basically induces those negative supercoils that decreases the stress involved with unwinding. And we have the SSB proteins, the single stranded binding proteins that basically act to make sure that those two single strands do not reassociate with one another. And once we unwind, what happens is the DNA polymerase shown in red basically binds onto our single stranded DNA molecules and it creates those phosphodiester bonds by combining, by attaching our nucleotides together. So first, we form the RNA primer by using our primase enzyme, and this is shown in purple, and then we basically create those other nucleotides by using our RNA polymerase, or DNA polymerase. And notice that 
for the case of the parent strand that runs from the from the three to the five direction the DNA polymerase basically creates the nucleotides beginning with the five and ending with the three end so we see that DNA polymerase has no problem synthesizing our daughter strand on the parent molecule that runs three to five However, what happens in this case for the parent strand that begins with the 5 and ends with the 3? If our DNA polymerase attaches to this side, it must synthesize in the 3 to 5 direction and that is not allowed. Remember, the DNA polymerase can only synthesize in the 5 to 3 direction. It cannot synthesize from the 3 to 5 direction. So, we see that that this strand that is formed by using the three to five parent strand is known as the leading strand and it's known as the leading strand because it is synthesized continuously without much problem however how exactly does the DNA polymerase actually synthesize the other parent strand that runs from the five to the three direction so let's take a look at the following diagram diagram and let's determine how this actually takes place. So let's begin with our parent strand that runs from the 3 to the 5 direction. So we can imagine that DNA helicase attaches to the origin of replication. It moves a certain distance and it unwinds our double-stranded DNA. So first we have the primase that lays down the RNA primer. So let's suppose we have our RNA uh, primer as shown. And then what happens? Our DNA polymer basically continuously forms our nucleotide piece by piece. So we form the following continuous strand and notice the formation actually takes place in the same exact direction as the movement of our helicase. So the helicase, this enzyme moves to the left along our x-axis and the replication also takes place in the same direction toward, towards the left along our x-axis. So because this is the three end, this end of the new daughter new uh, strand is our five end and this is the three end and this makes sense because our DNA polymerase can only synthesize in the five to three direction but what about this case what happens here notice the same thing cannot happen here because if that happened because this is the five end the first nucleotide must be the three end and our DNA polymerase cannot synthesize synthesize in the three to five end so instead what happens is we use our primase and the primase instead of forming only one RNA primer we form many RNA primers so we form as many RNA primers as we can so once we form the RNA primer as our DNA polymerase moves this way we see that our nucleotides are basically formed in the backward direction going this way. So as our DNA polymerase moves this way along our parent strand that runs from the 3 to 5, the one that runs from the 5 to 3, it takes place in the opposite direction going this way. So we form backwards with respect to the movement of our helicase. So we basically form going this way. This goes here, this goes here, this this goes here and this goes here. So this is known as the lagging strand because it lags behind the leading strand. So the leading strand is formed continuously and our DNA polymerase moves in the same direction as the motion of the fork, as the motion of our helicase. But for the lagging strand, our direction of the DNA polymerase is backwards. It's reversed and this is important because it basically ensures that the DNA polymerase forms in the 5 to 3 direction. So for the, la uh, for the lagging strand, so let's designate in 
using our red color this end is the five end and this end is the three end so we see going this way we form the five to three end and this we form the five to three end and that makes uh, makes sense because DNA polymerase can only form the new strands in the five to three direction and each one of these individual fragments individual pieces are known as the Okasagi fragment so once again for the leading strand for this strand here the DNA polymerase uses the primer to initiate replication so this purple section is the primer our DNA polymerase binds onto our primer and it moves along this fashion along this direction in a continuous fashion and the nucleotides continuously piece by piece in the forward direction in the same direction as the movement of this DNA helicase but to synthesize the other strand known as the lagging strand primase creates many RNA primers as far as possible down our parent strand that runs in the 5 to 3 direction and then DNA polymerase works backwards with respect to the direction of the movement of this replication fork. So the replication fork moves this way, this is synthesized this way, but this is synthesized in the opposite direction. And we see that the DNA helicase basically reads the parent strand in the allowed 3 to 5 direction and it forms the lagging strand in the 5 to 3 direction. So therefore, the polymerase forms the lagging strand in a piecewise fashion, so piece by piece, in a discontinuous manner. And each one of these pieces is known as the Okasagi fragments. Now, this process is important because it basically ensures two important things. Firstly, as our helicase moves this way, we, we see that the DNA polymerase is able to actually form the leading strand and our lagging strand at about the same exact time. And this type of process also ensures that the DNA polymerase creates both of these strands in the 5 to 3 direction. So going this way, we synthesize in a 5 to 3 fashion and going backwards, we also synthesize in the 5 to 3 fashion, which is the only way by which DNA polymerase actually synthesizes our new daughter DNA strands. Now, once we actually form all these Okasagi fragments, once we form the lagging strand, we have to connect those lagging strands. And the way we connect those strands is we remove these purple primers and we replace them with the proper nucleotides and we form, we connect the nucleotides by forming the phosphodiester bonds. And the enzyme that basically does this is known as DNA ligase. So once the Okasagi fragments are formed, an enzyme called DNA ligase connects the Okasagi fragments by creating phosphodiester linkages between our adjacent Okasagi fragments. So this is the process by which DNA is replicated. 